One day I go to my dad, why is there? Why is Hafiz? He goes, you have to memorize the whole Quran. I'm like, what? So I know I might get a flying stick behind. You know? <laughs> Some days you just might get mistakes in the Tarawih. You know, you think, oh no, what's people going to think? He's getting a mistake in Surah Yasin. That's because he knows the whole Quran, including Surah Yasin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just know Surah Yasin. Somehow, somewhere down in my life, I must have done something wrong, which Allah is showing to the public in some kind of sense in Tarawih. We're we'll trying to correct from the back stuff. People correct from the wudu, kind of even. <laughs> some days, the whole day, you think, thinking, oh, I'm going to struggle today in Tarawih. But when Tarawih comes, you think, oh, what happened? Death can come upon us anytime. So if we make intention today, and we die tomorrow, we die as a complete half is. Asalaamu Alaikum brothers, welcome to this exclusive program that we have for the Inca Scholars channel, especially for Ramadan. We have esteemed guests that have come all the way from Kid Minister. We have Sheikh Salih and Sheikh Minhaj. Can you please, please tell us a bit more about yourselves so the viewers can know about you guys? Asalaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullah. My dear respected brother, it's a very good blessing that we've had this up. We've been given this opportunity to have a short interview to say a few things and introduce ourselves. I mean, I studied in Madinah Tululum, Kiriminista. It's a branch of Dalumburi by uh, Hazrat Malay Sub Mutalasab. And I actually completed my hifs there and I'd done a door for one year. Like when you revise, after you finish your hifs, you do a bit of door and then, you know, you make your Quran solid like they, like, you know, you say. Because I had a bit of uh, traveling when I was doing my hips. I started at the age of 12 and um, that's where my madrasa, madrasa life started, which was back in 2000. So, but Alhamdulillah, it was something that, you know, i done from my own will. Nowadays, you don't get a lot, you know. Nowadays, People, some <laughs> kids just get forced into it. Some of them get yeah. forced into it. They get forced into it, and it's like, you know, after that, the ikhlas, the, the sincerity does come in. But, you know, alhamdulillah, I was encouraged from a young age, from my uh, teacher. He, was really, he wasn't even a sheikh himself, but we, he used to teach the qaidas and stuff. So he used to always say, you know, inshallah, one day I will see my uh, nephew Saleh in Bangladesh, you know, in his home village. One day, Sheikh Saleh, Qari, Hafiz, he used to say all these things and it just inspired me and I really wanted to do my hips. Subhanallah. My name is Minha Sharif. Um, I went to study, my parents sent me to Madrasa when I was in year 7. I was about 11 years old at that time. At that time I didn't really want to go. But at the same time I did want to go because my cousin, uh, he was much older than me, he just, he finished his, his course that time. And it's nearly finishing Adin course and he actually inspired me to go and uh, start this adventure. At first when I started, I don't want to do it. You know, just, if anything, I thought, oh, it's hard. I said I wanted to do it to my parents, to my dad, and I, one day I go to my dad, why is it, why is Hafiz? He goes, you have to memorize the whole Quran. I'm like, what? What? I'm crazy. I'm like, I can't do this. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, if, if gives you ways and just, he helps you. I love the way the brother said adventure. Oh, no, Alhamdulillah, it is an adventure though. Standing is always an adventure. Still. Okay, so next question then, uh, for both of our shuyukh. Um First of all, how long did it take for you to complete your hifs? And um, secondly, how long did it take for you to finish the alim class? Um, I started hifs when I was in year 8, which is about year 12. Uh, I was about 12 years old, 13 years old. So it took me about, it mean, varies, you know, some people, it depends on their memories, the strength of the memory. Some people can do it, mashallah, one year. Some people can do two years, three years, um, etc. Um, but for me, it took me to it took me four years to complete. Um, in them four years, there's so much things happen. Like you start and you think, oh, you can't carry on, and then the waswasa comes to your head. The shaitan goes, no, you can't do it. You just learn one. Mm. You just learn one. You just learn ten pages. How you can remember the rest? You know, but my right. teachers always tell me, you know, carry on doing it. They say the shaitan will come to you three times in in that in that in the in that adventure. In the beginning, you come, oh, you can't do this, it's too much. Then you come to you in the middle, then he goes, you've done half now. How are you going to remember the rest? You can't do this. Mm. And in the end, you come to you, look, it's too much, you can't do it now. Look, how are you going to remember it? You know, there's no point, just leave it now, it's getting too hard now. But alhamdulillah, with the, the du'as of my shuyukh and my parents, alhamdulillah, got to complete it. So I finished when I was in 2007, so uh, I finished in 2007. 
um, I was about 17 years, old, 17 years old at that time. And after that, my parents told me to start my Alim course. Mashallah. And that I wasn't keen on how, doing. How did you feel when you finished the years? What, what did you go through on when, that day where your graduation ceremony? When I finished that day, um, I was just over the moon. I was just thinking, have I actually done it? No, I actually done or going it. over the moon or doing the hips. <laughs> <laughs> doing my finishing my hips. Yeah, it was it's just it's incredible. It's incredible that it's respect is not something you should want. But alhamdulillah, when you say it to someone, Mahafiz, alhamdulillah, the respect you get is you just feel overwhelmed. You just think, oh no, it must be something. Why am I getting so much respect? It's not because of your. It's not because of your. Um, actions or what you what you've achieved is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Yeah, absolutely. He's yeah. given you the Quran for food that people will respect to Alhamdulillah. That's another thing about um, finishing hips. The thing that I realized with the day I graduated, Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Riyad al Haq, our start, he gave a speech about the connection that what happens to these students on the final day when they graduate. Yeah. What is it that they get? You know, they end up getting the you know, connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That they, you know, like we have a family tree and yes. everything. We read a we read a hadith that is narrated by so and so that says, mm. you know, this link comes all the way down to this person, and he is connected with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam through knowledge. You know, like in that hadith, they mention that al ulama wa ratatul anbiya, that the scholars, they are the inheritors of the prophets this is what it means and uh -huh. that's the most spiritual thing that actually got to me after I graduated that it's not respecting me but if anyone does respect me they're respecting this chain that I've got connected to the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that's what it is and so then it's deep <laughs> so now that we're in Ramadan season yeah, and you know Taraweeh and fasting now you guys now for us praying the Taraweeh, it can be a bit challenging. But subhanAllah, it doesn't even occur to us that there are shuyukh that are actually leading the Taraweeh. So your entire day goes in preparing for that Taraweeh. So my question is, how long does it take to prepare for the Taraweeh prayer? And what do you have to go through? Well, what do we have to go through? I mean, each and individ each, every, every individual, they're all separate, different. They have their own strategies, they mm -hmm. have their own ways to learn. With Quran, I've asked a few people myself, you know, how do you prepare? Some people, they break it down into rukus, some people break it down into, you know, quarters, pages. People, you know, some people, even myself, just keep on reading it until you know it. And, you know, just close the Quran when you think you know it, read it through. If you can read it without any mistakes, then, you know, you just go and pray to your partner. Do you, do you have like sessions, like you say, in half an hour, I'll, I'll do like... Uh, this amount and then I'll take a rest or do you just try to do all of it well what's well yeah um, like the preparation is basically for myself straight after um, Fajr okay. we you know I myself I just read through it first I'll read through the whole Tarawi part the part you know the full 20 rakas I'll read through it that whatever we're going to read the next day get a grasp of it and then I'll focus on my part solidly. Okay. And then what happens, I'll just read it through. After Dhuhr, before Dhuhr, I'll wake up, read it again. After Dhuhr, that's when you actually memorize, well myself, I actually memorize it completely. It's all there, but it's just re bringing it all back into fluency. And then after that, rest for a bit. If you need to do things, you know, go out, whatever, get a bit of fresh air refresh your mind and then before Asr sit down read after Asr is the best time to read Sorry. you know you see a lot of people they'll be doing dhikr you know the adhkars you know tasbihats and things like that this is the main time where you focus and you feel like a lot goes through and what you do is just read to one another you know close the Quran go through it it's amazing at that time because you can do it without no mistakes you know, that time is like, I don't know, when you recite to each other, no mistakes. Sometimes what happens when you get to the musalla, mm. that's when it, you know, kind yeah, of creeps in. We'll get it to changes. That though, but we'll get to that inshallah. inshallah. Yeah. I mean, with, with the Tarawi experience, like preparation, 
you need to concentrate. Okay. I mean, it's not, you know, we can't take it as a joke at all. It's a responsibility. But at the same time, you, you know, when it's over, you enjoy the whole thing. You look back at it and you think, at least, you know, I had the opportunity to make something of my I'm Ramadan. Sorry. And alongside all of this, you know, the amount of khatam Quran completions you can do mm. is amazing. Yeah, that, br that brings us to my next question, inshallah. Um, what does it actually feel like when you're, when you're up there on the musallah? Because there's a few hufas who I've spoken to where they've said that, you know, they've learned whatever they have to learn. And then when it, when it actually comes up to praying it, when you're on the musallah with, you know, so many people, you know, just the stress, knowing that the entire congregation's salah is dependent upon you, you know, having, it's a big burden to have on your shoulders. So, I mean, what, what does it feel like when you're actually up there? Because, you know, some people get stage fright, your mind might go blank. It's, you know, it's a big responsibility. So if you can just share, inshallah. Well, for me, when I first started, um, when you first start with anything, really, you feel really nervous. So I can remember the first time when I went, stepped on the musalla, I said, Allahu Akbar. My knees were shaking more. It was moving more than, the, than my mouth was actually, you know, moving when I was reading. You get butterflies. But even throughout the years, you know, when you go through it, you get used to it. You don't get as nervous. <clears throat> the days, some days you just might get mistakes in the tarawih. You know, you will think, oh no, what's people going to think, what's people going to think. But you, to be honest, you, that if you keep thinking like that, you'll put you down, you, 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 won't, you won't go forward. So whatever happens that day, you know, just keep it there and tomorrow's a new day, start again. Sometimes you might read the whole day and you're reading like Sheikh Sudeh, Sheikh Sudeim, you know, fluently, nice, you know. But when you go to the Musallah, it's a different story. Some days, the whole day you're thinking, oh, I'm going to struggle today in Tarawih. But when Tarawih comes, you think, well, what happened? You just, you just know it. You just feel, you just, you get in that zone. And you just read it. You just know it. It's amazing. But as t time goes past, obviously, um, you get, you don't get as much butterflies as before. You just, you just go there and do your stuff, and then come off again. Come off again. And I guess for the viewers, we need to relax a bit as well. If we have some problems, then we should give them, you know, the benefit of the doubt. Obviously, yeah. they're the human beings. They make mistakes. You get errors. Like they said, they prepare. Obviously. But sometimes you just get up there and you got jahids like us praying behind, you know, brothers like these guys. And obviously, you know... Because you get that a lot, don't you? Yeah. People try to correct from the back stuff. People correct from the wudu khana even. <laughs> and like, you know, you should leave it to the people in the front stuff. There's plenty, you know, ulama there. Tarawi finishes and they're like, that was a bit long, wasn't it? Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those comments are the deadly ones. That's, that's part of it, really. You know, all these... Um, thoughts that we get. It's a, it's a good thing, you know, when you get from the Musalli, sometimes you hear these things. It's actually a lesson. We, we should take Subhanallah. it in ourselves. Turning a negative into a positive. Uh, accepting criticism. I mean, Allah if, that is, at the end of the day, we have to, we all have to understand that whatever happens is from Allah. We say it with our mouths, but how much do we act upon it? You know, if you see, when we did in Tarawih, it must be that some, somehow, somewhere down in my life, I must have done something wrong, which Allah is showing to the public in some kind of sense in Tarawih. It could even be, you know, but at the same time, we should always realize, always bring it onto ourselves. I always do that, alhamdulillah, you know, I try my best to, you know, blame myself before anything. Mm. You know, I'm not worthy of being a half, it's, it's just that thing I have there on me, Allah has given me. And this is why, you know, when I lead Tarawih myself, when I stand up on the Musalla, you know, on the first day when I done it, it was in Bangladesh, and I'd only memorized three Jews. In my own madrasa, my ustaz said, you know, you have four rakats today. The, on the day he told me, and I've only memorized three Jews. So I went to my madrasa and I got there early. But the one thing I've had with me, alhamdulillah, is the confidence in going on the musalla. The confidence that I've had going on there. I had my asatiza behind me, Mashallah. the ones that teach me. So I know. I might get a flying stick behind. You know? <laughs> that's a deadly. That's a deadly one. This is in, this this is in, you know Bangladesh. Teachers are generally. worrying, isn't it? If, if your teacher's there, you just when they go, <coughs> you're like, <laughs> yeah. That's that's how it is, you know. But but the thing is, you know, it just on that day when I led the four accounts, I still remember where I read from, Swam. and how it went as well. The first day. I didn't get no mistakes at all. Mashallah, mashallah. My first ever tarawi, four rakats are done. So, how, how much was it? In four rakats, you read about what quarter juz? Half juz? Yeah, about quarter, yeah. Okay. Roughly a quarter, depending on what you're reading. Like okay, that mashallah. day, we were doing one part and a quarter. So, we read about in four rakats, I read a quarter. And that was the last quarter I'd done in my sabak. Oh, wow. So, the 
most recent sabaq I'd learnt, mm. I had to do the interrupt. So it was the least fluent then? It was the least flu- fluent quarter well, then? Well, you would think, you would yeah. think, but actually, you know, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. You know, Allah helps in so many ways. Mashallah. You know, sometimes people might think Yasin and he's getting a mistake. You know, the lo- you know people start thinking. Mm. The thing is, people only know Surah Yasin. Yeah, yeah, so they behind, like he's getting a mistake in Surah Yasin. That's because <laughs> he knows the whole Quran, including Surah Yasin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just know Surah Yasin. And <laughs> this is what happens, you know. It's just the easy Surah people think, yeah, because they read it every day. You know, I had a time when I got stuck in Yasin. As soon as I went down for Ruku, I was, you know, it's such an easy act. How come I got stuck? You know, it's the thing, it just breaks up the fluency. You know, you're going from one rakat, you break it down, and you have to remember when you're getting back up where you're reading from or where you read. Yeah. So sometimes what you do, you just go back one or two ayats. So it's, it's not so hard, you know, it's, it brings it back. So what's your advice for someone who's, who's currently doing his or currently becoming a scholar? Because obviously they'll get waswasa, they get waswasa telling them, "Ah, oh, stop now! Oh, it's too difficult." Because we get, obviously, we hear of a lot of people that drop out halfway through, or I've come across cases where they've literally been there for a month and then they just had enough. Well, it's not so hard, like for the people that are doing it, because they're on a flow. And at the end of the day, I believe whatever task you start, always think that I'm not going to go until I finish it. Whatever task is, even if you're cooking and it goes wrong, you know, just try and make it nice. So the people that are doing hivs, people that are doing alim class, memorizing the Quran is such a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The support you get is amazing. So my main advice would be never give up, you know, have a set routine. And most importantly is that before you start, do will do properly. Number two, is pray two rakats Salatul Hajjah before and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, make it easy for me. We read that, we hear about that dua all the time. Rabbi zidni ilma, Rabbi yassir, wa la tu'asir, wa tamim bakhair, Rabbi shahli. So we read that dua and Allah works in so many ways. We can't even imagine. So what we do is we always do this amal. My Ustad, he tells us, he never even taught us Quran the translation of the Quran without doing this wudu properly mm-hmm. and then he prays two rakats and then he will come and teach us Allah, you know this, 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 this is what he said and he said you know even memorizing when you're memorizing this Quran respect it so much so mm-hmm. prepare yourself for it don't just go in you know come run home from school and then you know people that do five to seven maktab and stuff even the kids we should teach them the parents you know Whoever is listening as well, they should, the parents, encourage your, you know, children. You should do it like that, you know, act upon this every day and Allah will help you. So as we say Allah helps, then Allah surely helps in every single way that we can do it. My advice would be to those who's doing it at the moment, carry on doing it. Because you might think it's hard, but anything else in life is also hard. You go into school, you do your GCSEs, you do your A-levels, you go into um, university, your degrees, PhD, masters. It's all hard, we all know it. So similarly, of course, learning the Quran will be hard. Do your, doing your alim class will be hard. But it's not impossible. It's possible. Anything is possible. You just keep at it. It's not, obviously, you do what you have to do. But at the same time, you also pray to Allah. Because at the end of the day, it's Him who gives you that knowledge. You know, he, the light enters the heart. You know, and the main thing is to refrain from sins. Each time we, it's each time we sin, a little black dot be, um um, a little black dot comes on our heart. You know, sin is something dark. So more sin you do, if you do sins and your heart becomes black, then how do you expect light to enter it? So istighfar is the main thingy. Wuzu is the main uh, is the main um, main uh, main uh, one of the main commodities. So we should do this. Um, you know, it's very important. Our tahara is cl- uh, you know. Um, a lot of kitabs, a lot of books you see, it says, you know, it, always, um, it starts with the chapter Kitab al Tahara. It's important because we can, do, we can do everything. We can do um, ibadat, we can do salah, but if we're not clean, we're not, if we're not pure, then that will be accept, accepted. So that's why Tahara is the main thing here. Mm. And all, of course, all the time you keep at it. Your family, your friends, they all encourage you. It's all there. But you just, it's, it's up to you if, how strong you are in that. Um, have you got any words to um, 
encourage those who may be considering starting the Hifs class or considering starting the Alim course? Um, any, any words of encouragement, inshallah? I mean, well, my main advice to the people that are thinking is what my Ustad said to us once in our, when I was in my third year of uh, my Alim class. He said, divide the Qur'an, there's 30 chapters, into years, 30 years. Even if it takes someone 30 years, he should never give up. Even a normal person. That's why I always think, if you're a Muslim, why can't you be a Hafiz? Take one year out to memorize one para. Even if you do it in 30 years, you still end up getting that ticket to Jannah. On top of that, you can take 10 people as well. So we hear the virtue. You can take, a Hafiz can take 10 people into Jannah. So you yourself, and then you've got 10 beloved people. That I'm sure the viewers will be thinking the same thing, inshallah. I'm going to you know, reserve my one place with them, yeah? just in case you guys see me in the wrong stuff. I'm, I'm actually serious. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. mean... Zishan, remember me, yeah, inshallah, when you guys inshallah. are inshallah, like, on your way. Just say, oh yeah, I remember that guy, you interviewed us one day. You know, inshallah, Allah takes us all to Jannah, Amen, you know, we'll, sit, we'll be sitting there together and we'll have a lot of interviews, inshallah, inshallah. you know, inshallah. with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, mentioning what he done and everything. Oh, so, this, this is what I'm saying, you know, we have to think about Jannah, the eternal life. People that are thinking, don't hold yourselves back, start from today, you know, even if it takes you 30 years, never give up. Imagine, imagine, if Allah was to give death within them 30 years. Even a person that intends and makes an effort and starts on the day of judgment, he will be classed as a full hafiz without any mistakes, even on the musalla as well. So, you know, you'll be climbing. You know, the, there's a hadith that mentions, you know, that you read, Allah will tell you that read and then keep on going up, and your place is where you stop. So, imagine everyone that's going to start from Surah Fatiha and then finish with Surah Nas. How many hufas they're going to be, and you're going to be amongst one of them, even if you just started and memorized Surah Fatiha. This, this is this is my, you know, what I will tell everyone that I think that is thinking about doing the hips. And this is this is why I say to you know people that are thinking that death can come upon us any time. So if we make intention today, and we die tomorrow, we die as a complete hafiz. Inshallah. You know, even the people that have become a hafiz and forgot it, you know. You're not, you're not going to be one of them. You're going to be one that's memorized it and knows it yeah. without a single mistake. So keep on going. That's my advice. Uh, before we leave, just some closing advice for brothers that have learned the Quran and uh, are not doing as much revision as they should. You know, what can you say regarding that? Well, my advice with the the people that are already half is alhamdulillah and the people even if it means like heart hips of a juz yeah. yeah even even the ten surahs don't think you're not a, you know some kind of half is you know people the the surahs that we pray in our salah even them always keep it going always we should always remember that we need to revise all the time people that are half is people that have gone halfway people that have done five juz one juz whatever whatever you've memorized Always make it a part of your routine every single day to recite a portion or recite something. And there's so many virtues, you know, when someone recites a hundred ayahs throughout the day, a hundred verses, then they're not counted amongst the ghafilin. So we should at least try and fulfill the rights of the Quran. The people that have become a hafiz, and you know, we should make sure that we never forget it. Whatever happens, because there's so many warnings. and. We, we've heard about the hadith, the people, the viewers that don't know as well, you know that the Qur'an runs away from a believer just as though a camel would when it's off his reins. So imagine how fast it can run away from us. Always keep it close to us. You know, we've, we, the people that are married they, with their wives and things like that, they're so into their love. This is the love we should have with the Qur'an. You know, ask yourself, do you love the Qur'an more than you love your wife and your family? We should ask ourselves, this is what we need to do. This is my advice to everyone that is becoming a Hafiz or not.